can't decide if I'm warm or cold in my house right now. This crazy weather. Okay, I've got six o'clock, so uh, we are reconvening back in open session for our September 28, 2020 special called meeting of the Paris County Board of Education. Um, we were in a closed session and consulting with our attorney, um, and we're now back in open session. So uh, to start off with, I guess we're going to do a roll call real quick to make sure all board members are online. So let me start with David Harrison. Are you on? Yes, sir. Barry Shoemaker. I'm here. Cindy Furtenbaugh. Here. Laura Blackwell. Laura, are you with us? Okay, I'm not hearing Laura. Holly Grimsley. Here. And Carolyn Carpenter. Here. And myself, Rob Walters. So one more shot for Laura. Are you on with us? Okay, hopefully she will connect with us shortly. Um, so our next item on our agenda, which is on the, the board docs, is to adopt our agenda for this evening. It's a limited agenda to discuss, to discuss uh, the incidents from last week. Uh, I need a motion and a second to approve the agenda. So moved. And Holly has her hand up. We have a motion. Have a second. So. I would like to make a motion to amend the agenda to add a discussion item of 5.3 uh, to discuss the motion that was passed on September 21st. I'll second that. <clears throat> uh, if you want to move it, let me know. Okay. Sorry about that, we're having a technical issue. Um, so we have, a, did you get a second for that? I did. I seconded. Second. Okay, so we have a, a motion to add another item, the review of, what was it, say that one more time so I have it clear. Uh, to discuss the motion that was passed on September the 21st. And basically it's just really for clarification on just a couple of items that was in there that I think the general public got um may be confused and we just need to do some clear it was very clear from some of our emails that um you know there was some confusion on some verbiage and i just think we need to take the opportunity tonight to clear it up hey, brian shaw do you have any issue, issue with the us adding items to the, spe the special call meeting um the general rule is that on a special meeting the purpose of the meeting is supposed to be publicized in advance so that, uh, and it's not just a general uh, meeting for all items. Uh, that's so the members of the public can determine whether they're going to be there or not, or watch it based on what the purpose is. So there is no absolute absolute prohibition against adding items, but it's disfavored for that reason because, uh, again, there might be members of the public that did not anticipate that to be an issue and we're not uh, not watching. Uh, we've had circumstances where there have been items add for closed session personnel matters, for example, where it really didn't affect the public interest that much because the public wasn't going to be there in the closed session anyway. Uh, so anyway, it's just a consideration. There's no absolute legal prohibition. It's just favored. Well, you want to wait for next week or should you still want it for this week? Well, if it would be okay with the rest of the board. It's not new information or anything that we're going to have to, uh, you know, it's what we discussed last week. I just think with the amount of emails that we received over the weekend and since that, 
meeting took place, that it would be good information to get back out so that it kind of settles some things down that's out there or just some misinformation. I just think as the board, it would be a good opportunity for us to do it. And it's not bringing anything new. It's what we did last week. So, and I understood that, uh, Brian, clearly, but I just thought, you know, just adding that at the end, just to clear up some dates and times and what actually took place. I just thought it was a good opportunity and not have to wait another whole week. Um, Cindy has her hand up and then David. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, um, I doubt that administration was notified as the rest of us board members were not all notified about that amendment. Uh, I agree with our legal counsel. I believe we just need to let it lie. And if there needs to be clarification in the district communication, perhaps share it through the district communication channel. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Harrison. And that's basically my thought as well. I'm not asking um, Ms. Boone to necessarily join the conversation right now, but if uh, clarifications do need to be made, then it should be through that communication um, channel um, of the school system, um, especially if, if, if they're just fine points and uh, clarifications um, as opposed to additional discussion now. Okay, thank you, Mr. Harrison. Mr. Shoemaker, you haven't had anything to say? Do you have anything, anything to add? You're muted. Oh, I, I don't see a need for us to discuss last week's motion during this meeting. I would like to keep this meeting abbreviated and, and let us move on. So um, I, I don't see a need for the clarification. Uh, like I, I agree with my counterparts, we can take, make, take care of any needs we have for cleaning up any un misunderstandings through district communications to parents. I believe they pretty much have it understood that there was a motion passed last week. So I think we should just move on and take care of tonight's business. Okay, thank you. Um, I like, we did get emails that people did seem to seem somewhat confused. Uh, how long would this take on? I mean, I just had three points that I just wanted to make sure we were clear. I just feel bad that parents are out there and they seem to be confused about, and even teachers, about what has went on. And I just thought it was a good opportunity since we were having a public meeting. You know, I find it ironic that I just got a copy of a resolution at 535 with some changes that I didn't have prior. So it's not like we don't do that. Um, but if it's the pleasure of the board to push this to next week, then that's okay with me. I just, I thought it was a good opportunity to get some things out there that we all got lots of emails with lots of questions and it just wasn't really that much. You know, it's just talking about the safety items, the actual start dates, um, you know, just verifying some information that was in the motion. It shouldn't have really been that big a deal, but I'll go with the pleasure of the board. All right. Can we vote on this? We have a motion to amend the agenda to add it an item to review the, the <clears throat> vote from last week. Mr. Chairman, I will, I'm point of order here. I, have we got Laura on? Is Ms. Blackwell on? She was not on before. Laura? Okay, uh, let's, let's, let's hey. go. Oops. Can y'all hear her? No. Laura, are you on? I'm trying get on to the internet. It is not working, so um, it's not letting me get onto the team. Can y'all hear her? She's actually called my phone to let me know that her internet's not working. Can y'all hear me? I can hear you now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, board. When did you? When did when did Laura log in? She's missed this discussion. Do what? I'm sorry. I sent you a text message that my internet went down about five fifty-five. Okay. Well, yeah, but we're discussing it. There was a, an amendment to the the agenda tonight. We're we have a discussion of that. We're ready to vote. And I don't think you've been participating in that discussion. So, so can we? Rob, would you? Would you rehearse the or uh, review the? Okay, again, Ms. Grimsley has asked that we amend our agenda 
to add an item that's a review of the vote that was taken last week. There were some clarifications that she wanted to make. So that would, if it was added, it would, I guess it would be added to 5.3. Mr. Chairman, I think we just need to vote on it. And if it goes great, if it doesn't, we'll move it to next week's agenda. That's fine. Okay. My, my issue is this Laura has not been participating in that discussion. So would she? I guess you need to ask her if she. Mr. I'm not, Mr. I don't Shaw, know how to. Mr. Shaw, can she vote on this item? If she's present, she can vote. Okay. All right. All in favor of adding the. Uh, <laughs> item 5.3 to the agenda to review the uh, vote from last week. Please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Say no. 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 Nay. Okay, so we have three no's and four yeses. We're going to add that 5.3 to the discussion. All right. So we will move on to Item 5.1, which is discussion of appropriate and inappropriate board member speech. And I called this meeting so that the board has a formal opportunity to address the hot mic incident from last week and board, board meeting etiquette issues that occurred at our last meeting. Comments that we overheard include included the use of an inappropriate word, inappropriate word that was seen as disparaging to a specific group of people because of a disability. The board is sensitive to that, and we want to address the matter specifically today so that it does not continue to cause division and pain among our Cabarrus County community. I would also like to use this unfortunate incident as a teaching moment to educate the board and the community about why the R, R word is hurtful and should no longer be part of our vocabulary. Ms. Melanie Miller, with the executive director with ARC of Cabarrus and Union County, an organization that serves intellectual and development to individuals and their families has reached out to, to us after our last meeting last week. I've accepted her offer to speak to us to share with us how these individuals feel when they hear the R word. Ms. Miller, are you on with us? Could you, uh, I'll hand it over to you to, to address the board. Yes, um, um, good evening. I believe I'm unmuted now. Yes. <clears throat> um, first of all, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to say thank you to all the board members for your service to the students and families of Cabarrus County. Um, as Mr. Walter said, I'm with the ARC of Union Cabarrus. Um, we're a local nonprofit that provides both programs and advocacy to kids and adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their families. Um, and so on behalf of all of us that we serve, we really appreciate the opportunity to take just a couple of moments tonight to shed a little bit more light on why there was such a strong reaction to the use of the R word or retarded during last night's meeting, last week's meeting, excuse me. Um, our goal here is not to vilify. Our goal is to reach out for education and understanding. And I know this, this will probably sound a little cliche, but I know many of us have watched a lot of Oprah over the years and remember her latching on to this one phrase, when you know better, you do better. And so we want to help you get to know us better, to get to know our community, and then move on to the doing part. And you know, I, I, after the meeting, I, I know we heard from quite a lot of people who understood what was happening, but then also a lot of people who really felt like our community was being thin skinned or too emotional, that it was just a word. And so I appreciate the opportunity to shed just a little bit more light on why this is so much more than just a word. So when they were originally introduced, um, the terms mental retardation or mentally retarded were medical terms. They had a specifically clinical connotation. But over time, the word retarded or retard came to be used as an insult. It was tossed around on the playground as a synonym for stupid or dumb. And when these words are used by people, even when they're not referring to a specific person, like on the playground, but about a situation that someone feels is absurd or ridiculous, it reinforces those painful stereotypes of people with intellectual disabilities being less valued members of our society. Have you ever been told right after the birth of your child, it's okay, you don't have to keep him? I'm not talking about something that happened 80 years ago. This was something that was said in the 1980s to a family who lives right here in Cabarrus County. So feeling less valued is real. 
It's not something that happened a long time ago. It is something that is present and current today. You know, no, no one uses diabetes or cancer to denigrate another person because having those medical conditions does not make someone lesser or subhuman. No one says, oh, that's so cancer or that's so diabetic. Even as y'all hear me say that, you, you know that that doesn't make any sense because having diabetes or cancer does not make someone less of a human, just like those diagnosed with an intellectual disability. Um, next Monday, the date of your next regular meeting is actually a really important day for people with intellectual disabilities and their families and friends, um, because October 5th is the 10th anniversary of what's called Rose's Law. And this was a federal law that removes the terms mental retardation and mentally retarded from federal health, education, and labor policy, and it replaces them with people first language, intellectual disability, an individual with an intellectual disability. <clears throat> this bill was championed by both a Republican and a, and a Democrat senator and was approved unanimously by both the House and the Senate. And who knows when the last time that's happened or when it will happen again. But this was something that brought all of those bodies together. And so by using a person first language like intellectual disability and federal laws, our country is now sending a strong message that language is important. And no form of the R word should be used to refer to any of its citizens. But it was only two years ago in 2018 that North Carolina changed that phrase mental retardation to intellectual disability in our general statutes. So in our community, in this state right here, you know, the, these wounds are still fresh. This is still something that is very current and lived day to day. And, you know, there's a lot of folks who are defending the use of, you know, using that word, saying things like, oh, well, you know, you can't say anything anymore, or things like that. But, you know, there, there's a lot of less offensive words that will work as substitutions. You know, a situation is irrational or ridiculous or foolish or irritating. We're asking folks to, to make your speech more varied and less hurtful. Avoiding the R word or any other type of slur, it, it's not just being politically correct. A lot of times all of us will kind of toss that out. Avoiding those words is just showing people respect. It sends a message that these people are part of regular society and they deserve respect, even if they're not like you or me. It's called person first language, the people are first. And so, it, it, you know, if, if, if we all want society to embrace people of all differences, and, and I know we all do, you know, that, that's something that, that, that's there and I really believe is inherent in all of us. It, it's important for each of us to really stand up and be kind, and be inclusive and be ready to educate. And I think one of the reasons it, it, it was even more hurtful a little bit to see on a public platform is because you all have a really, really important position. You know, it is influential, it's impactful. We need you all to be allies for inclusion. We, we, don't, we don't want you to turn inward. We don't want you to shut down. This really can't be swept under the rug. You know, our, our children, they, they need to see the adults in charge taking a stand against hurtful language, but they also need to see us be kind. They need to see us to reach out to people who have hurt us and give them the opportunity to do better. We want people to reach out to us and, and, and learn about us and not see us as a, as, as a specific group. Intellectual disability cuts across all races, all socioeconomic levels, ages, you know, it, everything. It, it is a community that is among all of us. And so by saying that we, we want you to take a stand, but we also want to extend that kindness, you know, th this, this isn't a pass. This is not the sweeping under the rug. This is us, our community, the folks that I'm here representing today, requiring everyone to do better because you can, we all can. And language, quite simply, it's the easiest way to start down the path of inclusion. It's words. And they're so meaningful, but every single one of us can, can make that change. You know, our, our language affects our attitude and our attitude affects our actions and all those actions add up to affecting our future. So again, I really appreciate the opportunity 
for us to, to share with you. Um, anything else that I can do or the other wonderful disability organizations that are in this area, we're all talking and, and want to be here. And, and you know, we're, we're a part of the community, you're a part of the community, and, and we just, we need to uplift and support each other. And so thank you so much for your time and consideration this evening. Mr. Walter, you're on mute. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Um, board members, do we have any comments or questions from Ms. Miller? I just want to say I appreciate her being here. Thank you so much. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you very much, Ms. Miller. Ms. Mr. Walters, I'm not of her, but I do would like to make a comment myself if okay. when we have comments. If it's related to this her discussion, then you can make a comment. Well, well, otherwise... it's, it's about actually it's about comments about what people make, you know, about uh, uh, about emails and things like that. And in um, in vein of the same subject. Okay, go ahead. Go, go ahead and share, Carolyn, since you already. Okay. Uh, well, I would like to remind people when uh, of our viewers and anyone that is uh, sending us emails that when you send us emails that it is public record. And I want to remind you of that because over all these emails we have been getting, uh, I have been getting emails that have curse words in them or what I would consider bad words and our emails are public record and we get requests from uh, newspapers and from TV stations and as they just mentioned words can be very hurtful and I find that very alarming to me. I do not use bad words or curse words in my home and I find that very distressing to me. So I just want to remind the public it is public record. So this is just a quick reminder. So I know that it's very, uh, this subject has been very distressing to everyone. So when you write those emails, please remember that because they are turned over to the news media and everything else. And your names are attached to that. So this is just a quick reminder of that. And I'm sure our attorney would be more than happy to give you the general statute that shows this. And so again, I just want to remind you of that because when I read those words, that's upsetting to me because personally, I don't like to read that type of uh, language when I'm reading it and that is alarming to me. So I just wanted to give a quick reminder of that to those individuals that but most of the ones we read, everyone has been very, you know, nice with their words and everything, but there are a few that have not been and I just wanted to bring that to the attention of those individuals and I and we even had one that on the last vote, they said they wish the four of us got COVID. And again, that is not very nice of individuals to say that. And, you know, that is, you know, we all have to be kind in our our thoughts, but they wish thank, the four thank, of us got that. Thank you, Ms. Carpenter. I appreciate those comments. Um, we're going to move on to the discussion of the appropriate and inappropriate speech and obviously last last week uh, we have a code of ethics and part of that has to do with modeling civility to students employees and all elements of the community by encouraging free expression of opinion by all board members and engaging in respectful dialogue with fellow board members on matters being considered at the board we obviously didn't do that last week on, at times um, we've reviewed this incident um, i do want to bring back brian shaw and, and again like we you've talked to us before what are what were the options that the boards can consider um, in response to a board member you know, violating policy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walter. Um, when uh, a board member speaks in a way that other board members find inappropriate uh, or takes actions that are in, inconsistent with what seems to be the board member's ethical duties, the uh, question arises, can the board take any action? Uh, 
And the first question some people ask is whether the Board of Education could remove a board member. And the answer to that is no. Uh, there used to be a provision under North Carolina law where a board, local Board of Education could refer a board member to the State Board of Education. The State Board of Education would review and find that if the allegations were true, they might support the removal. And then the State Board of Education would send the matter back to the local Board of Education to hold a hearing. However, that statute was uh, uh, suspended and deleted in 2007. So there is no provision for a local Board of Education to remove a board member. It's, uh, it's a political matter uh, for uh, the board member himself or herself and for the voters. Uh, on the other hand, an option that is available and that we see from time to time is a vote of censure. That would be something the board could do. It's a statement of the, it's the board's own statement regarding behavior uh, and saying that a board member, a fellow board member is censured for that behavior. Uh, and the board has the right to, to do that, to take have a vote of censure. Uh, it has no legal effect, but it does have the statement, the effect that the board is, uh, that the other board member has not lived up to the values uh, that are expected of a board member. So that's a vote of censure. That would be a possibility. Uh, and so those, those are really the main options if the board wants to try to take a formal action. It's a vote of censure. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. And we have uh, worked on something uh, along those lines, and I do have a draft of, that, of a censor to read. Um, is there a way I can share my screen? To our tech people, is there a way I can share my screen? Dane? Mr. Walter, in the gray box that comes up in the middle where we mute the microphone or the video there is an up arrow okay you can click on that and then you can choose what you want to share from documents you have open did that work yes you might want to make it bigger yes it did okay i cannot see there's a big box that showed up on my screen Okay, um, tell me if you can see that. Is that good enough? Can we see that? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and, and read the resolution of censure, and then we can discuss it. And if Ms. Blackwell is on, I think she can respond if she has a statement for us. Um, here it goes. Whereas on Monday, September 21st, 2020, during the Cabarrus County Board of Education meeting recess, Board member Laura Blackwell was heard making disparaging comments towards another board member and using an inappropriate term to describe emotion. And whereas Ms. Blackwell has been a valuable member of the Cabarrus County Board of Education since December of 2018 and whose term runs through November 2022. And whereas the Board of Education Policy 2120 Code of Ethics for School Board Members signed by each board member includes a clause that states that a board member commits to modeling civility to students, employees, all elements of the community by encouraging free expression of opinions by all board members and engaging in respectful dialogue with fellow board members on matters being considered by the board. And, and I'll scroll this a little bit further. Whereas board members are public officials who represent and make decisions for the school system and are expected to be held to a high professional standard in their actions, behaviors, and communications. And whereas board members were shocked, disappointed, and upset by the words Ms. Blackwell was overheard using. And whereas Ms. Blackwell's comments created a public outcry. And whereas, whereas the board has received a petition, calls, and emails from Ms. Blackwell to resign. And whereas any decision to resign rests in the, with the individual board member and Ms. Blackwell's actions do not meet mm -hmm. the standards for removal under board policy 2116, removal from office. And it is a little lengthy, so bear with me. Whereas a word that Ms. Blackwell used is considered hurtful and offensive to individuals with disabilities, 
specifically individuals with intellectual disabilities. And whereas Ms. Blackwell, Blackwell did take responsibility for her actions and did offer an apology during the meeting on September 21st and made additional written public apologies. And whereas Ms. Blackwell did apologize directly to the board member for her disparaging comments were directed towards. And whereas the Board of Education believes it is imperative that the board address and remedy the situation. And now, therefore, the Cabarrus County Board of Education hereby acknowledges that this incident occurred and commits to maintaining positive discourse and civility during our meetings. The board further acknowledges and affirms the following, that Ms. Blackwell's language was unacceptable, inappropriate, and hurtful, and does not reflect the views or values of Cabarrus County Board of Education. Number two, that Ms. Blackwell should recommit to honoring the standards and behaviors in the Code of Ethics for school board members. Number three, that the language used by Ms. Blackwell was offensive and that individuals were justifiably offended and upset by hearing those words. Number four, that the board offers our apology and commitment to not allow a similar situation to occur. Number five, that the board values all people, in particular, affirms that all students, staff, parents, and community members with intellectual and physical disabilities are valued and important members of the Cabarrus County Schools community. Number six, that the board reaffirms its desire to provide inclusive and excellent, exceptional children programs and services to the students and families we serve. Number seven, that the board commits to participating in training that includes information about acceptable children. And I'm sorry for going that way. Almost done. Number eight, that the board members will participate participate, if able, with the 2021 Special Olympics held here in Cabarrus County. Be it resolved that the Board of Education further, further formally censors Board Member Laura Blackwell for the inappropriate and unacceptable comments recited above. And if we approve it, it's adopted today, the 28th day of September. Um, that was the uh, resolution that we came up with. I'd like to uh, Ms. Blackwell, if she's on, to to uh, comment first to respond. Mr. Chair, should we take a motion and a second and then have comments? That, yeah, I guess that's in order. Move to adopt the resolution, ask for a second. We have a motion to adopt by Mr. Harrison. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Second by Ms. Furtenball. Discussion, Laura, are you on? Holly, is she still on? I lost her on the phone as well. I'm not sure what happened. Okay. Well, we'll Hang on, I'll try to get her back. Here she is. Hang on, I think. Laura, are you there? I'm here. Okay. I don't know what happened, but we got disconnected even on the phone. Well. I'm not, not able to. So, can you see me on video? I don't think so. Are you logged in? Um, yeah, I'm on. You're on Microsoft Teams? Uh, I am. I just I had to do it on a different laptop. Okay. Uh, board, can y'all see her? I'm, I can't. I can't see her either. She's not available yet. Well, I can. Are you in the right meeting? I can see y'all. Are you at the right meeting, Laura? You know there was two. Yeah, I can see y'all, and I'm watching. Yeah, I can okay. see y'all. Okay, well, maybe they can just hear you through my no. mic. How's that? Is that? Does that work for everyone? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I listened to the resolution. Um, so I do want to make a statement. Can everyone hear me? Yes. So I just wanted to let everyone know that I appreciate those of you that have given me words of encouragement. More so, I appreciate those of you who have criticized me. I let my emotions get the better of me. The past week has been one of contemplation and reflection for me. My hope is to explain why I've chosen the path of Board of Education. I'm not a teacher, but I am a proud mom of kids who are Cabarrus County School student and someone who wants to make a difference in our community. 
Over the last week, I have been deeply concerned about the accusations and false narratives that have been directed towards me. Uh, I'm saddened that a word that was taken so far out of context and insinuated and boldly accused me of calling children, and especially those with disabilities, a derogatory name. Put simply, this is not true, and I believe that most people can see that. Many of our EC students and K-3 students have been the most affected during this virtual class setting. This is a critical time in their development, socially, emotionally, and academically. During these last few months, I've had one goal, how can we get our children back in school safely? This will continue to be my plight. We need to get back to work, focusing on their education and getting the students back in the classroom. Okay. Is that, that was a, your statement? Okay, thank you. Um, we have a motion, we have a second, we have comments by Laura. Anyone else want to add anything? I can't hear that. Thank you, board, for that. We also want to move on to our next discussion item, which is reviewing board protocol. And as you know, last week we had some issues where uh, people were blocked and wanting to speak and people that were speaking over each other. Um, so I kind of wanted to review the board protocol on how we can do better with our meetings um, so we can avoid some of that happening again. I had a couple ideas, and again, you know, feel free to, to chime in or any, any, any of that, but uh, uh, we have a resolution that essentially says that discussions should be 21, 20 minutes um, before we vote, whichever is earlier, where everybody has an opportunity to speak. That essentially is about three minutes per person. Uh, we haven't really held to that. We've really been more focused on making sure every board member has an opportunity to speak. Um, but if we did limit it to three minutes, I think that would uh, make things go a little bit smoother, a little less time to go back and forth to debate. Um, thoughts on that idea? Mr. Chairman, I wrote up several bullets of just practices that we as a board have used in the past. Um, may I share those? Yes, Mr. Ferdinand, please do. And we can, this is not a rule or anything, but it's just things we've done in the past. Um, I need to find it. I have many things open here. Um, it's not going to be the right one. That's not what I want to share. That's the resolution. I had two word documents open, so let me. OK, can you see that now, sir? It's not black screen for me. It's not it's not sharing. Uh, it's sharing, but it's not. I couldn't get my thing unmuted in time. Yeah, they did. I yeah, see a mouse on the black screen. David? You said you cannot see it? I cannot see it. I see your mouse. I, well, I heard them both, yeah. OK. Um, I, I actually sent it to you. Um, let me close a couple things and see if it will work. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not showing up as an eligible item that I can share for some reason. I don't know why. Um, so we'll try to stop sharing here. Did you email it to me? I did. It's in your email. Let me see if I can share a screen again. Can you all see it? Cindy? I can see it now, yes. So do you want me to walk through it? Yes, please. Okay. Um, the first one, just normal Roberts rules. All board members must be recognized by the chair before offering comments. Um, Board members will use a business tone and professional tone with their voice. 
Um, during virtual meetings, board members may use the team's raise hand option to indicate their intent to comment and basically queue up there. Um, during virtual or in-person meetings, the chair may notify the board that members may offer comments based on an orderly acknowledgement by the board chair. And that was just that statement was just to describe how we often go when we're sitting at the dais. We go from left to right or right to left, whichever direction. So we always know when we're going to be next. Um, each board member will have three minutes to comment on a topic with no more than two separate comment periods per board member for any particular topic. And I think we can adjust those minutes and say three minutes and then a one minute follow up if necessary. Um, board members will not use cell phones, social media or email during the meeting unless specifically requested to view new information. Family members should be instructed to text the board clerk for any emergency sit situations. And can you scroll up, Mr. Chairman, because I can't see the bottom of it now. Thank you. Um, and no questions will be taken from the public after the meeting starts, including by way of text, email, social media, or other messaging methods. Um, I know that has happened to all of us in the past where um, the public is sending us questions on email or in by text if they have our numbers. Um, and I think in order to maintain that we have specific public input at certain meetings, um, it does not seem fair to the general public if we take questions by way of other means because certain people do have our numbers or, or uh, ways to reach us. So anyways, a starting point, but I think we need to get back to our normal protocol. And I think when we're all there visually, it's easier um, to see each other. Um, but since we're on um, virtually, sometimes people get lost in the internet and feel like it's easier to say anything. So, um, and Mr. Chair, just as a reminder, would you make a statement or comment about why we're not meeting in person yet? Yeah, I can do that. I can unshare the screen so I can see you all. Yeah, essentially, we're meeting virtually because we're still under the government's governor's phase 2.5 order that limits indoor meetings to 25 people. So with our staff members and our board members, we're very close to that 25 uh, number and we wouldn't have be able to allow the public to attend. And we are kind of required to allow the public to attend our meetings. Therefore, we're continuing to do the virtual so a large audience can observe us live. All right, um, comments on suggested protocols from Ms. Furtenbaugh. Anybody raise your hand or, or speak? I mean, our goal here is just to have a better flowing meeting. Barry's got your hand up, Barry. Yeah, I believe the protocols are, are fairly common sense. There are a lot of what we were doing in the past which just kind of drifted away from it. Um, and I think it's just time to, to reestablish our, our organization and the way we, we handle ourselves in the meetings. Uh, you know, it's much easier when we're face to face in the dais. I mean, and the virtual world has uh, challenged us a little bit. And I think that uh, getting used to the tools that we have will help us uh, do a better job of this. Thank you. Mr. Harris, can you have your hand raised? Uh, yes, sir. And I guess this might be a kind of procedural thing. Um, we have a policy committee which handles all of our policies, but the policy that these uh, updates or comments or additions may um, or certainly do uh, apply to our, you know, board specific policies. So it's, um, it might be appropriate to for the board to ask uh, Mr. Schultz or um, I'm sorry, uh, uh, our attorney, pardon me, um, to review the policies and work on uh, an update to the policy and then come through the normal order. If, if anything, it's an administ administrative guideline, mm -hmm. maybe not a policy. It wouldn't necessarily have to go before the whole policy committee so much as it comes through the attorney and then uh, to the board. It wouldn't need to be discussed as a regular policy per se, I don't think. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Harrison. Mr. Shaw, do you have a response? Sure, I would be uh, glad to look at that, review the current board policies, any uh, informal uh, guidelines that might exist, and make sure they're 
all up to date and consistent. I, I think one of the big issues here is the transition from the traditional regular meeting to the virtual meeting. And we, we've, it, it's harder to know whose hand is up. We have to be more vigilant about that. Uh, I think these are is a good reminder on how we can have a better meeting, but I'd be glad to try to put something together and, and run it by administration and, and board members and policy committee. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Ms. Ferdbaugh and then Ms. Ms. Grimsley. Yeah, I just wanted to comment. I, I agree with, uh, I think Rob, you said earlier about administrative guideline. I don't think all this needs to be in policy. I think we do need to have some phrases like respectful dialogue um, included in there. Um, but I don't think all of these, we were doing pretty well sitting in person in the meeting with these, but sometimes it just kind of uh, gets lost in the wild. So <laughs> uh, we just need to get back to some order, orderly um, ways to have our meetings. Um, okay, th thank you. Before Mr. Grimsley, they're, they're telling me we have a, we're having technical issues with Teams. Our meeting could be disconnected at any moment. People are having issues getting in on and off. So if we do have a, uh, an issue, we can try to come back. Otherwise, we're going to have to uh, recess the meeting until next week. Um, Ms. Grimsley, go ahead. So I actually was just going to comment that, um, you know, we all, I think, are just very passionate about what we discuss each meeting. But most of us, because we do a lot of these meetings on different programs, Zoom, Skype for Business, Microsoft Teams, they all work and operate differently. So, you know, just like I know there was some frustration last week, um, that little yellow hand was new to me. <laughs> so I would like to, number one, I'm hoping that we're going to confirm that our meeting, meetings will go back in person starting in October. So we need to probably have that discussion. And Mr. Chairman, just prior to maybe it would be great just to set the stage that any questions, raise the hand. You are going to acknowledge us just maybe prior to the meeting of what your expectations are. That might be very helpful because I'm doing several different meetings a day in different applications and programs, and sometimes I just absolutely forget. Thank right. you. Thank you for those comments. Okay, this is not an action item or anything. It was just a discussion to avoid what when I, what occurred last week and try to get better. So. Um, with that, I guess we can move on to our next item, which is the one, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman. If, if I'm wondering if Mr. Hughes can tell us how much of the audience we have lost, because uh, what Mrs. Grimsley wants to go over, I'm wondering if we even have an audience, because it looks like we've lost most of the staff members. Um, we still have a good. We have 1,500 people viewing online currently, and we still have 20 presenters for the staff connected. So we're doing pretty good still, but there are logging issues and dropping in and out. So okay, I just saw that the little icons disappeared. All we have is the generic icons. So. Yeah, there's there's going to be issues going up and down. There's problems with Microsoft at this point. Okay, so I guess we're going to move forward. It is on the agenda now, so let's cover that topic. So, Ms. Grimsley. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, Dr. Louder, are you on? I'm not so sure I see you on. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'm on. Okay, okay great. Um, I just felt like there was, we had received quite a few emails asking about information regarding the motion that was made last week, and I felt like there was some confusion. So I just I just thought it would be a great opportunity for us to uh, clear up some of those items. And, you know, I know you're going to be able to speak to them because we talked about them last week. Uh, but we're, first, I would like to ask our board attorney to validate that there was a motion passed and it was confirmed. Brian, could you speak to that, please? I think our, our board clerk can confirm that for us. Uh, whomever. I, I certainly can confirm there was a motion passed. I don't happen to have it in front of me. Uh, so I can't tell you off the top of the head my details, but yes, there was a valid motion passed uh, last week. Great. And with that being said, I think most of the uh, nuts and bolts of it is that the middle school and high school 
and fourth and fifth grade of elementary would return. The date stated um, I'm in a couple of different places. I'm not sure that was correct. I think October the 19th was really for staff and October the 26th would, been for, would be for students. If somebody wants to speak to that piece of it, I think that was a little confusing and got out in some different areas. I think uh, Cabarrus County Schools put it out correctly, but there were some other, I'm not sure where all, but I got that sent to me a couple of times. What is the actual effective date for, for students? Mm -hmm. And then also that K-3 would, would only be attendant an additional two days. So they would be four, not five. Um, so Dr. Lauder, would you please confirm and speak to that? Um, you know, if there was confusion of what was passed, I think that's a board issue. Um, my understanding is what you just said is that that it was K three for four days a week. I think the board meant for that to be pre K through three, but that may be something that you guys need to discuss also because um, there certainly was a lot of confusion around that. Okay. So, what are you putting out as far as the announcement? Well, we put out what the board passed, I think, but the board um, did not address preschool, and I think the board intended to to address preschool, but that may be something you guys want to address. Okay, and I'm more than happy to do that. I wasn't really sure how we would, uh, if, if we needed to, I'm, I wasn't sure, and maybe we need Brian to weigh in on this. If if we feel like as a board that it was clear and maybe we should have mm -hmm. added pre-K, I'm not sure anybody brought that up. Um, I'm more than happy to do that tonight. I guess board members, if you want to make comment to that. We didn't clear up the date. What was it? What was the start date for kids? So Dr. Hill, are you on? Yes. So I heard in plan B, I was assuming the no dates would change. So what I saw in the presentation was October the 19th is actually staff and October the 26th is actually the students. Um, actually, what we presented was October 19th would be for students and staff. We don't okay. have any intention for staff to come in prior. Well, let me take that back. They will come back um, as assigned by their principal, but for all staff to come back will be October 19th. And students? Yes. Okay, so I think in my motion, I was looking at it, it states the first date of the second nine weeks, the first day of the second nine weeks. And that's what I left it because I was not real sure. Y'all referenced uh, the 19th and then something about the 26th. So I just left it as the, the first day of the second nine weeks. So what date actually is that? So we re we recommended the 19th is when all students return. And then, as you know, the board changed our recommendation and and dealt with K-3. That may be where the confusion is. But our recommendation was to bring all students back on October 19th. And that's still what we would that that's that has always been the date of students returning. So we didn't change the date, though. Yes. All right. Um, In my motion, I put the first day of do, the second nine weeks. Do we have this motion in writing that we can post? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Ms. The, nine, the nine weeks ends at the end of the week of the 19th. So the 19th as described in plan B version two, um, we were going to use the last week of the first nine weeks and the first week of the second nine weeks which is the weeks of 1019 and 1026 respectively in order to transition into plan B. So students and staff are all there in the week of on their appropriate days in the week of October 19th. So the plan doesn't start on the nine or on the 26th, which is the first of the nine weeks. It starts on the 19th, which is the last week of the first quarter. So we may need to redo the motion perhaps to say if it wasn't clear. I'm more than happy to do that. I just felt like there was some confusion. I wish that would have been pointed out last week. I think we could have cleared that up, but there was so much stuff going on with that. And I know there was just a, a lot of information and a lot of questions going back and forth, but I'm more than happy to clean that part of it up uh, with 
resubmitting my motion. I also wanted to, while we're at it, if that's if the date needs to be clarified and confirmed, we can do that tonight. And then also we received a lot of questions about safety measures uh, for especially the teachers. And I know we we've, we've discussed this a lot. You know, we've asked for information and, and I'm not sure the teachers and parents have been given that type of information or that we haven't had a good way to get that out there to them. And we haven't had much discussion in, in public meetings, but Dr. Lauder, I'm, I'm I know that I asked you to go over those safety measures last week, and I would just like to reaffirm those because the verbiage I placed in the motion was that we would enter in and all the safety measures would be adhered to, but maybe I should have been more definitive that we're going to mandate mask all day. There will be the six foot social distancing. Would would you reiterate all that that you're actually going to just put out to the teachers and to the staff? Well, I think I tried to clarify last week that in pre if it's pre K now pre K three that we could not guarantee social distancing. So we we spent a good bit of time of saying depending on how many students show up, social distance um, would not be possible in some classrooms. And so that may be where the confusion came from because we certainly clarified that. So. We said we weren't sure, so you're not 100% positive about that. We discussed the numbers by attrition regarding the uh, number and the statistic you gave us about parents that had decided to remain remote learning, that we would have to figure that in. And we discussed that once you started looking at that and you were getting those surveys back so that we could really decide if that was going to be an issue and the board would be updated, correct? No, I think what we said was that we were anticipating that being somewhere between 30 and 40 percent. That's what the other district said. It was what our first survey said, but that was done before you guys made the decision to go to A. So when we said 30 to 40 percent, that's a district number. So it may be that we have some classes that are under, but we very well may have some classes that are over. And I think I also use as the example the dual language classes, which are, you know, some of those begin at 25. So that was why I stated last week that uh, until we know how many students are coming back, we can't guarantee social distancing in those classrooms. But you will inform us if you see uh, that it looks like it's going to start to be a problem. Well, once we get the students back, we can certainly you know, let anybody know how many um, students are in each class, but they will have arrived before we can make that determination based on what you passed last week. Are we not going to get the survey results that you've sent out st asking if they're going to attend in remote or in person? Yeah, so the surveys will be back this week, but we know two things from the surveys. One is that people change their minds sometimes because of work situations, etc. So what's in the survey may not be um, what comes through. And I think what you guys saw in a lot of your emails is people who were comfortable with B were not necessarily comfortable in A. So those numbers are are going to change. And so we'll we'll know that um, on October 19th for sure. So we are going to get the results of that survey this week. We have a board meeting this coming Monday night, so I'm assuming we'll have that those results. Yeah, those results will come in for school, but let's say a, a school has a thousand students um, on Wednesday. They may only get 500 responses, so there may be still 500 responses missing. Therefore, schools will have to try to track those down and probably still won't be able to get in touch with everybody. So that'll be an ongoing process. But we'll have some idea if it's if it looks like the numbers would get us in trouble by Monday, correct? Well, it depends on how many people answer the survey. So we can right. certainly give you the results of the survey, but um, what those will be, um, we don't know yet, but we can certainly provide those to you. Great. So my question is, just as an aside, because I thought about it, if if we are going to have almost literally from that first initial survey, just under half of our population that, that's going to return, then, you know, as much as I even hate to say it, but we have room there with the usage of mobiles and extra areas that we could use when the other kids are not on campus. I mean, I just feel like there's there's things that we haven't really thought about that we could do or use and utilize uh, those spaces if need be. Do you agree with that or is that something that we can 
Take well, we can't there. split up. If a class shows up, let's say in a dual language class with 25 students and all 25 of them show up, we can't put 13 students in the classroom beside or out in the mobile unit. They won't be with their teacher. So it certainly would cause logistical problems. Okay, can we can we kind of limit or limit this sure. conversation to the motion that passed yesterday? Okay. We're, we're getting into quite a bit more, which I think we would be a great item for next week. That sounds great. I just didn't know if tonight we need to do is it the pleasure of the board that we modify the motion or tweak it is there anything that we need to do for times dates do we feel like the staff is okay that the date i really didn't put a date uh, designated in the motion it was the time frame but i just want to make sure everybody's comfortable we have october 19th is what we passed um according to mindy which is accurate correct yes Hi, this is Mindy. Do you want me to read the motion that we had that I read re-listened to this morning? That would be great. <clears throat> Please bear with me. I'm kind of losing my voice. Um, it said, effective October 19th, K3 will enter in Plan A. Fourth, fifth, middle, and high will enter in Plan B schedule with the safety measures in place. Well, we also mentioned four days, didn't we? Right. So that was my other uh, piece to that. I, I'm not so sure if we should, you know, maybe I should have thought about it, that it's actually a, a true plan A, which would be five days a week for that uh, group of students. It's really a modified plan A if we want to get technical about it. It's only four days, not five. So what's the pleasure of the board? Would you like me to change the verbiage and, and do another motion, modify that motion? Are you comfortable with just adding knowing that it is going to include uh, pre-K? Okay, so we have a question. Of, I got Cindy's got her hand raised and Barry has her, his hand raised. So, Cindy. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I would suggest that, um, Ms. Grimsley, if you want to not to restate the entire motion, but just add a clarification motion that includes what you said about the four days a week to clarify for all, all students in the plan A, would it be four days a week and to include pre K? I know in the motion that Mr. Shoemaker presented, we did have um, pre-K included because I recall that I actually said that, but I think we just lost it along the way. Um, so we only need to, if Mr. Shaw, if that's okay, can we just do a clarification motion to say this includes pre-K on the plan A schedule and it includes um, a four day week program under plan A for the K-3. Yeah, this is this is Brian Shaw, and I don't want to jump in ahead of Barry, so I want to hear Barry's comments. But basically, anybody can make a motion. I mean, Holly made the motion last week, but this is it's a board action, so I think anybody can clarify that if they want. It makes sense if Holly does it, but uh, it could be a short motion like that. Okay, thank you, Barry. Got to unmute. Yep. So um, I would suggest that if Holly, if you're going to reword the motion, go ahead and add in there the teacher work day that they had planned for October the 23rd. That was also a part of the original plan, and that was the end of the nine weeks, and they were asking for a teacher work day to kind of help them get uh, transitioned into the new nine weeks of the second quarter. And um, uh, that that's that's all I had. Thank you, Mr. Schumacher. Back to you, Ms. Grimsley. I'm happy to do that. Are y'all ready? Yes. Okay, I will Let's, move that we... David, did you want to say something prior? Just that I'll support the clarifications. Okay, sorry. Go ahead, Ms. Grimsley. Okay, so I move that we do a modification to the original motion to include pre-K the October the 23rd teacher work day and clarification that it is a four day week for pre-K through, th through th third grade. Okay, do we have a second to that motion? I'll second it. Okay, second by Ms. Blackwell. All right, any further discussion? Okay, so the motion on the table here is uh, to modify the original motion to include um, pre-K. Mr. A Chairman, respectfully, would you use the word clarification? That mo prior motion was already passed. 
OK, so clarification motion to include pre-K. And an October 23rd teacher workday and a four day a week K through three. Modified planning. Pre-K through third. Pre-K through four, third. OK, does everybody understand that motion? All right, let's vote all in favor of the clarification motion. Mr. Chairman, can we have discussion for a moment, please? Yeah, Ms. Carpenter had her hand up, then I'd like to make a comment. Okay, Ms. Carpenter and then Ms. Ferdinbaugh. Yes. I, I didn't see your didn't see your hand, Carolyn. Um, yes, I, I would like to clarify something, and that's why we said we were going to clarify things. In her motion, she did state for uh, the health part. You did have that in your motion. And I wanted to make sure what we were clarifying as health, whether we were clarifying that the children would be wearing masks all the time, whether there would be hand washing, temperature checks, cleaning. And from what I gather, for them to be able to social distance, we would have to have 25% reduction in children for that to happen. And, you know, and all these emails we have received, everybody says, Ms. Carpenter's forgot about all the safety features. No, Ms. Carpenter has not. And Ms. Gr uh, Ms. Grimsley knows that has been one of my biggest concerns I have. I am not forgetting about the children. I am not forgetting about the staff. And I can tell you if these numbers do jump up, which they have not, we got all got our report. Uh, this week, the numbers have gone down for uh, to 5.6. Um, and so they are continued to go down. State is 4.6. Uh, so they are on a downward trend. Uh, so I am still looking at those. But I can tell you right now, if I see them jump up to 7.5 or 8%, I'm going to jerk it in a heartbeat. Uh, and Ms. Grimsley knows that. I've told her that. Uh, and she's uh, agrees. <laughs> and so. That is one of my concerns, uh, but I want to know on the face mask, the temperature checks, uh, the uh, cleaning and the temp checks to make sure we are going to do those things. Uh, that is one of my major concerns because the safety of the staff, the students, that is still one of my big concerns. Are we going to require that? Now, I did talk with Dr. Louder earlier in the week, um, and that was still, you know, having those class sizes, whether we could social distance. And he did say until we got that survey back, it's still kind of up in the air on the social distancing. Uh, but the mass, the wash, uh, cleaning, Ms. Carpenter, uh, and temperature <laughs> check. all that was part of the presentation and all that was included in Ms. Grimsley's. That's in B, but I'm talking about A. Yes, everything that, in, in B was included in A. But, well, we got, I want to hear that to say, yes, those are. Her, and her, who's her going to do it? It said safety precautions included. It is included. Okay, I want to make list, sure. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Carpenter. Mr. Harris, Harrison, did you raise your hand next? I can't, I don't remember. Okay, Cindy, go ahead. I just wanted to share with my colleagues on the board that I respect the decision you made last week, even though I disagree with you, um, and I will vote to support the clarifications tonight. I just want to clarify from the standpoint of um, once we as a board make a decision, it is our duty to support the majority of the board in that decision, and I will do that tonight. Thank you for those comments. Okay, Mr. Harrison. Um, in a similar vein um my vote was what it was last week and i want to support the clarifications that we're making here tonight the um, community deserves those clarifications and our teachers certainly 
deserve those clarifications. Um, and I think we can move on to um, kind of solidify what the motion was uh, intended to be with the uh, comments we've made here tonight. It's more like an addendum to the uh, motion and just clarifications of matters. There is one thing I want to mention, um, Mr. Walter, since you guys are clarifying. So it, it sounds like, you know, the way it was stated, which I, I think is just the way it's stated, that we're saying it's a four day week. It is not a four day week. Students and teachers are all working on Friday. They are just working remotely on Friday. So um, I don't want to you know, pass that it's a four day week because again, teachers and students are both working. So just make sure that that's clear. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm sorry, Ms. Car Ms. Carpenter had her hand up, but didn't mean to jump in. Are, are these all the clarifications we need to make so that Dr. Louder's staff and team can lock this down and go forward so that so there are no further tweaks short of um, changes in the health uh, data to consider? Uh, uh, the staff really needs and deserves to have some absolute certainty to go forward so that they can pro provide a sound education to their children. The only other thing that I don't know that you guys have clarified tonight is that um, EC centralized placement, our OCS and pre-K will all be four days a week. So um, I think that was discussed last week, but if you're trying to clarify tonight that they'll all be face to face four days a week. So that's Ms. just Grimm, centralized please. placement, placement not, the, not all EC children. That is correct. Centralized placement and our OCS classes. Ms. Grimsley, would you um, accept that as a uh, friendly addition to the clarifications? It was already in their plan B. I didn't really change any of that at all, so that stands. Okay, any more hands up other than David? I mean, there are other questions. We've had plenty of emails that ask all kinds of things as far as different things, but I think this does clarify the motion that was given last week. Okay, Barry. Sorry to be so late. Um, two, two items. Uh, first, there's a survey that's going out and a number of teachers are, or not teachers, excuse me, a number of parents have uh, expressed um, just not sure about how to answer some questions on it. And there is a way that you have to answer the survey to make sure that uh, you either go virtual or you go A. And, and Dr. Lauder, if they answer the question that they want to go virtual, then they are to remain in virtual for the rest of the quarter. Is that correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. And if they answer the question no, I believe that's the answer, that they would like to go to A or go to class, then they have the option of going to class, but can go virtual at any time during the period during the second quarter. Is that correct? Yeah, we certainly like for people to make that choice, but if they're uncomfortable and say, I want to go virtual for the rest of the quarter there, they can do that. Yeah, because I think that they didn't realize that there was a point that they could, you know, that they could answer for the, I could attend class. I think they were really fretting that they didn't have any option they had to commit one way or the other so there is a uh, a way to test the waters but if you don't like what you feel then you can go back to the safer option which is the virtual option would you would you agree with that yes as we said they can um you know choose a and then ultimately go virtual for the rest of the quarter so the final I am only going to vote for this clarification. I did not agree to put our students into the face-to-face -face level that uh, was passed last week, but as my other colleagues have noted, it, we do need to make sure that our parents understand what the rule, rules are, and once Dr. Louder gets the surveys back, they'll understand a lot more about the rules of how to enter into this, and I think he's clarified on the survey. so. Parents, if you're watching, please understand that the survey does have some um, room for you to to make some decisions. And if you don't like, there's a way to 
um, go back to something safe. And, and, you know, the object here is to make sure that everyone feels safe in what they do and that they have some some way to protect themselves if they feel like they the face-to-face -face decision was not the proper decision. So I will support the clarification motion. I still go on record as not supporting the original motion, and I just want that to be clear. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schumacher. It's options for parents, correct? Um, are we ready to vote? Do you need me to re restate the motion, or are we, we good? Okay, it sounds... I think we can vote. Okay, all in favor of the clarifying motion, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, that, no objections. That motion passes 7-0. And we have come to the end of our <clears throat> agenda. I did want to clarify for those that might have been cut off that we did vote on a resolution of censure, and that motion didn't have any objections either, so that motion is well passed as well. So to end our meeting tonight, we'll need a... Uh, a motion and a second to adjourn. So moved. A motion second. by David Harrison. Second by Cindy Furtenbaugh. Any discussion? Okay. Does Mr. Shoemaker, Mr. Chairman, does Mr. Shoemaker still have his hand up? I did see his hand go up, so I want to. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to, when you said the motion was carried, was that a unanimous motion? Uh, I didn't have any, it, as far as I'm, I'm marking it as, as yes, I did not hear from Ms. Blackwell. So if she's on the line, she can clarify. I, I voted aye. Okay. Yeah. So that would be seven seven zero. Thank you. Thank you. I just I, you know the the audience just wanted to know what the vote was, so I was just trying to get that clear. Thank you. Okay. With that, let's vote on our our adjournment motion. <clears throat> All in favor, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? That motion passes, and we are now adjourned till next week. Thank you for our listening audience, even with the technical difficulties, for joining in. Thank you Thanks. very much. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.